Now, here's David Smoke, Paul Catalina, and Craig Smoke. All right, David Hellman, DallasCowboys.com. Cowboys training camp starts this month. It's no longer later on or in three months or next month. It's not. It's this this month. David, I got a question, though. It's completely off the radar from you, and that's the name of a segment Craig does. How was the slip and slide this weekend? Oh, it was absolutely phenomenal. It was uh, it was a welcome reprieve from the summer heat. Ironically, it was supposed to be a pool party, but uh, the pool got delayed by the amount of rain we've had up here this spring and summer. Uh, so it was the next best thing, and uh, it was you know it was fun. It was it was a good time, especially you know have a couple beers and it sounds even more fun. And it was yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. So what was it like to be on something that people think is only for kids, but the parents or the adults were having the most fun? Oh, yeah. I mean, there, was, there wasn't there was a single kid at the entire party. It was all adults. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, the the guy that put it in was joking, like, oh, your, your kids are going to have a blast. And we were like, yes, kids. Yes, <laughs> they will definitely, yeah. they will definitely have a blast. Yeah, like I said, I mean – it, it would probably be more fun to have a swimming pool, but you got to make do in desperate times. And uh, I thought we did a good job of that. Yeah. Good, it was a good uh, showing of being adaptable. Yeah, I'm trying to be like, yeah, they'll be here soon. Later, the kids, the, not just yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> um, kids will be here soon. All right. Uh, the uh, the the question du jour today on the website was the emerging superstar. You picked Neville Gallimore. Uh, do you really feel like he is on the up based on your know, first couple games last year? He looked very much like a rookie, but but really kind of uh, steadied off towards the end of the year and looked like you know he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I'm just I'm really intrigued by his um, his trajectory because yeah, I mean he couldn't really even get on the field for the first half of last season, but. He finally got a shot around midseason, and I mean, he didn't just play. He looked pretty darn good. Uh, he was disruptive. He looked strong. Um, you know, he made some real highlight plays over the course of November and December, and he's had a full off season. He hasn't had to deal with any injuries or anything like that. Um, and then again, this is a position that's so wide open. You know, there really isn't an entrenched starter or somebody that he has to beat. I think he. You know, the start, one of the starting jobs is there for him if he shows up to camp and it seems like he's done all the right work. So um, maybe part of it is just me really wanting to, the Cowboys to find a dominant defensive tackle because Lord knows it's been a long time since they've had one. But uh, I'm awfully optimistic about, you know, the traje- trajectory that he's been on since the second half of last year. David, uh, not only is it going to be cool for, for everything to just kind of open up and, you know, camp in California later on this month, but uh, we know Hard Knocks is going to be a part of the party as well. They are certainly no stranger to covering the Cowboys, but, uh, you know, given the year, given all the storylines, uh, given everything opening back up, what do you think about Hard Knocks joining the mix in California? I mean, it's the Dallas Cowboys, so I, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be too different, to be honest with you. You. I mean, this team brings the spotlight with it everywhere it goes. I think I said when the news came down, I was like, well, I mean, it's, and I think we've talked about it before. Like, Dallas Cowboys are never going to sneak up on anyone. It's just not possible. And so you might as well just embrace the spotlight. There's obviously a lot of really good storylines on this team. I think it should make for some really good TV. Um, if I had to guess, it's going to mean a little bit of extra work for me and everybody else that covers them. But – I mean, what else is new? That's kind of par for the course as well. So I think it should be fun. Of the players the Cowboys have on their roster, the ones that have been starters, the ones we know about, who is, in your opinion, in the discussion of being the best at the position in Cowboys history? Across any position? Yep. I mean, the guy that comes to mind for me right away is probably Larry Allen. Uh, Obviously, you know, he gets a ton of credit. He's in the Hall of Fame. I'm not, I don't want to go as far as to say that he's underrated, but, you know, I think you could make the case that he's the best guard to ever play professional football. And I think he kind of, he gets forgotten about in that, you know, with, with all of the great players that, that have come through the Cowboys doors, I understand it, but I don't know if he gets, I don't know if he always gets his just due. Um, for my money, like I probably wouldn't say Emmett Smith is the best running back of all time. I think I'd probably go Barry Sanders, but I think you have to put Emmett Smith in the in that conversation. 
you know, be- best quarterback ever? No, but like I just I think you got to mention Roger Staubach, not just not just for on the field play, but just his impact. And I mean, when you talk about guys that are iconic in terms of the legacy of the NFL, I think he's very close to the top of the list. So that's uh, that's three that come to mind right off the bat. All right, let me ask you this: on the players who are currently on the team, is Tyron Smith? The only one, or well, I, I forgot, of course, Zach Martin. How do you forget him? The best in Cowboys history of the position they play, because tackle and guard, you know there's great competition over the years, but would those be the ones in the conversation? Yeah, right now. I mean, I think Tyron and Zach are, are probably the only guys on this roster that currently have a shot at the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, you don't want to write the book on Zach or, or Zach, uh, Zach or Zeke too quickly. So, you know, maybe revisit that in a few years. But right now, right now, I think Tyron and Zach are the only guys on this roster with a shot at the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, and, you know, if Zach Martin plays another five to ten years and keeps going to all pro teams and things like that, I think he'll have, you know, he'll have a very good case. And, yeah, I mean, Tyron Smith is already in some pretty elite company with seven Pro Bowl appearances and three or four All-Pro nominations. So um, if he can stay healthy for at least a few more years, yeah, I absolutely think he, he would be able to make that case by the time he's ready to retire. Have their off-season signings along the offensive line pushed Brandon Knight and Terrence Steele down to the place where, and I'm not trying to knock them, but where they probably should be on the roster at this point in their career in that they're playing when it's a dire emergency and not week one? I really hope so. I mean, that's what it looks like right now, but we learned last year, you never know for sure. If I had to bet, I think Brandon Knight's going to be at guard for the outset of training camp at the very least, which is a good thing because that means your tackle depth is good, right? So, you know, that's, that's kind of encouraging. But again, you know, this time last year, I had no reason to believe Tyron Smith or Lyle Collins wouldn't be available for that, for the start of training camp and the start of the season. So, We'll see how it plays out, but yeah, right now, I mean, you got Tyron and Lyle looking healthy, looking ready. They obviously spent a pretty high draft pick on Josh Ball. I do wonder, you know, not to dog Ty and Secchi, you know, I haven't seen enough of him to know how good or bad he is, but just when you play that number game of, okay, this guy's on a one-year deal for not a lot of money, you know, we know the Cowboys are trying to shed salary where they can. Maybe that's a spot where you can get away with getting rid of a veteran if one of your young guys outplays him. Uh, but that's something that we'll have to see as training camp goes along. But right now, yeah, I mean, the tackle depth looks fantastic in July. Uh, we'll see We'll see how long that stays the case once they start playing. David, obviously the expectations because of who they are are always high and probably sometimes higher than they need to be. But at times they're also legitimate because of the, the players they have. Um, if in fact things get off to a rocky start, if they get off to like a bad start, who on the staff, if in fact Mike McCarthy doesn't survive, is the next man up? I've heard a lot of people say Dan Quinn, which makes sense because he is, you know, he's a, he's been a head coach. He's been to a Super Bowl. He's done this. He's done that. He's a longtime veteran. This is just me, and nobody has told me this. But if, I, if that were to happen, you know, if for some reason Mike McCarthy is gone with, you know, with a sizable chunk of the season left to play, I would, I would make Kellen Moore the interim head coach. It's very eerily similar to the way that Jason Garrett got his start. You know, it sounds weird to say right now, but Jason Garrett was one of the hot commodity coordinators in the NFL for a stretch there. You know, the Baltimore Ravens tried to hire him away and the Cowboys kept him and you know, he, he was the guy, he was the offensive mastermind and he wound up being the interim head coach and going five and three and getting the head, you know, the full-time job because of it. I think Kellen Moore's an, you know, he's, he's a rising star. The Cowboys, you know, managed to keep him here instead of going back to his alma mater, Boise State last December. And, uh, what, this will be his third year as the offensive coordinator. And, you know, he's managed to had a great offense in 2019 and managed to hold things together pretty well considering the amount of injuries they had to deal with last year. So if you're in a situation like that, I'd rather give the young guy a shot and see if he's got what it takes to be an NFL head coach as opposed to just promote a guy who's been there and done that. So that's what I would do. Um, I, I can't speak for Jerry Jones, but I would be intrigued to see if, if the hotshot coordinator is really fit for the job. 
David, uh, I, I, I keep thinking about this when it comes to when people ask about Mike McCarthy. And, of course, you got to give him more than just last year. But one of the things, you know, he had a couple of times in press conferences where he clearly didn't quite grasp that, like, Dallas is different. Like, when he, he mentioned, like, oh, we, you know, moving Zach Martin to tackle his fantasy football stuff when, you know, Larry Allen, who we talked about, did that very thing uh, when needed and, and played out at tackle or moved from tackle to guard. And uh, I remember something that Randall Cobb said, like the first day he was there for minicamp, where he said, with all the people around his locker, he's like, well, this is, this is like a Sunday after a playoff game in Green Bay with this many people. Do you think Mike McCarthy might be better suited for that this year, knowing that while the Packers is a high-profile job, nothing compares to the, you know, a Tuesday around the locker at the Cowboys when you're from Green Bay? It's a really good question. Um, and my like my immediate thought is he has had a year to get used to this. And so maybe I, mean, I agree with you for the most part. I think I think there's going to be a level of culture shock with the Cowboys no matter where you come from. Because I just don't know. I don't know how many stages in football compare to that. Like you said, even the Packers. I, just, I don't think it's quite the same. Um, but then at the same time, you know, last year was – was a weird year. It was COVID. Mike did all of his press conferences on a, on a video monitor without anybody in the room. And, you know, the post game press conferences were all on the phone um, where you're not facing 800 cameras. So I, you know, I think it's fair to say he still hasn't seen the full brunt of what's waiting for him during the course of a more normal year. Now, obviously I don't think anybody a hundred percent knows what media is going to look like this season. Obviously we're trending we're trending back toward being normal, but I doubt it's going to be all the way normal. Uh, so I, I'll be curious to see how much of that he sees in his second year. If I had to guess, it's still going to be a little bit unusual. Thank you, David. Appreciate your time. Yep. David Hellman, DallasCowboys.com with us. Uh, Cowboys training camp, they fly in, I guess, arrive like July 20th. They'll start right up the top and uh, Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California, about an hour or so plus north of L.A. on the coast in California. Yeah, and I need to, uh, if we ever go out there again, I need to do some proper research on some sightseeing. Uh, well, the last time we went, uh, one former coworker of ours, uh, WW, uh, he and I have, I guess, uh, some kinship as far as being true crime fans. And we went and drove by. I discovered that uh, like a famous uh, murder had occurred at some house not far from Oxnard. And I can't remember which one it was now. It was a major, major one though and he and i drove by there and it, we were with this one we're yeah we were going yeah. to the airport you yeah, know, yeah yeah well it's, you told us about like we went by the manson ranch or the, the yeah, yeah we yeah that we passed by yeah. on the way to the airport and that i would have definitely loved to like because i kind of know how you're you can get there and all that but I, I i love sightseeing and we never get to do a ton of it uh but that area of the country is just beautiful and the reason why i brought this up was because back to the future one of them was on the other day and there were some scenes from, I think, the second one that were shot in and around the Oxnard area where we were uh, typically. So, yeah, that's, that's cool they're going back out there. I was afraid when the Cowboys got the star that everything was just going to be Arlington, 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 which just seems kind of boring and, and kind of non-Cowboys to be boring. So I'm glad they're still doing that. All right. Uh, I hope we get a chance to get out there for at least a little bit, even if it's for three to four days.